Surrounded by beautiful, bright rings, the planet Saturn is sometimes called the Pearl of the Solar System. Classified as a gas giant, Saturn is the sixth farthest planet from the Sun, and the second largest planet in the Solar System after Jupiter. It is known that Saturn comes from the name of the Roman god Saturn, an analog of the god Kronos of Greek mythology, who commanded the powerful Titans. It is because of its gigantic size and unusual appearance that the gas giant gets its name. It is the farthest planet from Earth visible to the naked eye, but the most remarkable feature of the planet is its famous ring system. Although the other gas giants of the solar system, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, also have rings, Saturn's rings are particularly prominent, earning it the nickname the Ringed Planet. Saturn is the last of the planets that ancient civilizations discovered on their own. Moreover, it is today the least explored planet. However, at present, the data of scientists on Saturn are constantly being reconstructed, and this is due to the Cassini planetary mission. This spacecraft has continuously monitored not only the gas giant itself, its ring system, but also the satellites of the planet. Due to the gaseous nature and high pressure on the surface, life on Saturn is almost impossible, and even more so, the establishment of a human space colony. Nevertheless, scientists did not exclude that on some of Saturn's moons. In addition to the proven existence of liquid on their surfaces, the existence of simple organisms is possible. In this context, scientists suggest that conditions on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, are similar to those that existed on our planet 4 billion years ago, when life had just emerged on Earth. Imagine that not imported from Earth, but from local living organisms. Dear Traveler, good morning. Today, we leave for a new space journey to discover the wonders of our solar system and around the ring giant. Before leaving for a new adventure, think of liking the video and subscribing to the channel to not miss anything. Thanks to all, and have a nice trip. Apart from Earth, Saturn is the most recognizable planet in the solar system. The reason is obvious, the rings. Although other gas giants also have ring systems, none of them can in any way closely resemble Saturn's environment in size and beauty. Saturn is the least dense planet in the solar system. It is composed mainly of hydrogen and has a density lower than that of water. Therefore, if there were a giant bath in which a planet could be placed, Saturn would float and not sink. In addition, Saturn is the flattest of the eight planets. Its polar diameter is 90% of its equatorial diameter. This is due to the fact that this low-density planet has a high rotational speed. Saturn's magnetic field is slightly weaker than that of the Earth. However, its intensity is 1 20th that of the magnetic field of Jupiter. In addition, the magnetic field of the planet has a unique characteristic, which is the coincidence with the axis of rotation of the planet. With a radius of 58,232 kilometers, or 36,000 miles, Saturn is the second largest planet in our solar system after Jupiter and has several similarities with Jupiter, which we will discuss in this video. Indeed, Saturn and Jupiter together represent 92% of the total mass of the planets in the solar system. Thus, to make a trip along the equator at Saturn, it's necessary to travel a distance of 365,882 kilometers, or almost 230,000 miles. Saturn's radius is about 9.5 times the radius of our planet. In addition, the gas giant is almost 95 times more massive than Earth. To better understand the size of Saturn, 
Imagine if 764 planets like Earth could fit inside of it. As the most massive planet in the solar system after Jupiter, the pull of Saturn's gravity has helped shape the fate of our solar system. It may have helped to violently throw Neptune and Uranus outward. In addition, along with Jupiter, it could also have launched a field of debris and dust toward the inner planets early in the history of the solar system. Each planet in the solar system takes a certain amount of time to complete one revolution around the Sun and one revolution around its axis. On our planet, these periods last respectively 365.25 days and 24 hours. But things are different on Saturn. The average orbital distance of Saturn is 1.43 billion kilometers, or almost 900 million miles. This means that Saturn is 9.5 times further from the Sun than the total distance between the Earth and the Sun. Consequently, it takes about 1 hour and 20 minutes for the sunlight to reach the planet. In addition, given Saturn's distance from the Sun, the length of the year on the planet is 10.7 Earth days, or about 29.5 Earth years. Saturn rotates once on its axis in only 10 hours and 34 minutes, which makes it the second shortest day among the planets of our solar system. Only Jupiter rotates faster. Because of the high rotation speed, Saturn flattens at the poles and expands towards the equator, giving the planet the shape of a spheroid, i.e. a sphere that bulges somewhat around the equator. Saturn's orbital eccentricity is the third largest after Mercury and Mars. Because of this large eccentricity, the distance between the planet's perihelion and aphelion is quite large. About 0.15 billion kilometers, or 93 million miles. The axial tilt of Saturn is 26.7 degrees. This tilt is very similar to that of the Earth, which explains why the planet has the same seasons as the Earth. However, because of the great distance between Saturn and the Sun, the planet receives much less sunlight throughout the year, which is why the seasons on Saturn are much more confused than on Earth. The second surprising feature of Saturn's rotation is the different rotation rates between different apparent latitudes. This phenomenon results from the fact that the predominant substance in Saturn's composition is a gas and not a solid body. As Saturn and Earth travel in their orbits, the distance between them constantly changes. When they are close, the two planets are about 1.195 billion kilometers, or 750 million miles apart. However, when Saturn and Earth are farthest apart, the distance between them is about 1.66 billion kilometers, or 1 billion miles. The great distance imposes a long flight time for spacecraft to reach Saturn. However, the flight time to Saturn is determined by two factors, the route chosen for the mission and the speed of the spacecraft. For example, the Voyager 1 mission reached Saturn in three years and two months while the Cassini spacecraft took six years and nine months to reach Saturn. Because of the great distance separating Saturn from Earth, space explorations of this gas giant began later. The first spacecraft to visit the planet was Pioneer 1, launched by NASA in 1973, which successfully reached Saturn in 1979, flying within 22,000 kilometers, or 14,000 miles, of the ring planet. Low resolution images from the spacecraft allowed astronomers to discover two of the planet's outer rings, as well as the presence of a strong magnetic field. In 1977, NASA launched two more missions, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which provided scientists with valuable data about Saturn, its moons and rings, as well as thousands of high resolution images. These two missions helped astronomers discover that the planet's rings are made up of finer loops. They also returned data that led to the discovery of three of Saturn's moons. It is worth noting that the twin spacecraft have continued their long journey 
to explore interstellar space not yet visited by terrestrial spacecraft. Launched in 1997, the Cassini-Huygens Automatic Interplanetary Station was the fourth spacecraft to visit Saturn and the first to orbit it. The mission included NASA's Cassini Station and the European Space Agency's Huygens Probe, which was the first spacecraft to reach and land on the surface of Titan. The Cassini spacecraft was the largest interplanetary spacecraft ever built. The two-stage probe weighed 5.4 tons. It helped identify plumes on the icy moon Enceladus and carried the Huygens probe, which plunged into Titan's atmosphere to land successfully on its surface. After a decade of observation, Cassini has returned incredible data on the ring planet and its moons. In addition, Cassini was the first mission to explore an extraterrestrial ocean. The mission ended in September 15, 2017, after completing 293 orbits around Saturn. In order to protect the moons of the planet, the space probe Cassini ends its journey by crashing into the atmosphere of Saturn. In 2019, NASA announced its intention to launch its lander Dragonfly in 2027 to arrive on Titan in 2034. Dragonfly will search for the potential for life on Titan using its many onboard instruments, including a mass spectrometer to determine the chemical composition of the terrain and a seismometer to detect earthquakes on the moon. In the atmosphere, Dragonfly will monitor atmospheric conditions and photograph Titan's landscape. Because of the presence of lakes, rivers, and hydrocarbon seas on the moon, it is highly likely that the first form of extraterrestrial life will be discovered. The gas giant is mainly composed of the same components as the sun. However, the planet does not have the mass to trigger fusion reactions and become a star. Like the rest of the planets in the solar system, Saturn was formed from the solar nebula. The planet formed about 4.5 billion years ago and took its current position as the sixth planet from the sun about 4 billion years ago. believed that in its structure, Saturn is very similar to Jupiter and is divided into three layers. The inner layer is a rocky silicate core, 10 to 20 times more massive than the planet Earth. In addition, it is estimated that the core is embedded in a layer of liquid metallic hydrogen. So at a depth of about 30,000 kilometers, or 18,000 miles, the temperature is 10,000 degrees Celsius or over 18,032 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure is that of about 3 million of our atmospheres. In the core itself, the pressure is even higher, as is the temperature. This is the heat source that warms the entire planet. It is known that Saturn gives off more heat than it receives from the Sun. The outer layer is made of molecular hydrogen, the only significant difference between the structure of Saturn and Jupiter is the thickness of the two outer layers. In fact, Jupiter has a metallic layer of hydrogen 46,000 kilometers or 29,000 miles thick and a molecular layer of hydrogen 12,200 kilometers or 7,600 miles, while Saturn's is 14,500 kilometers 9,000 miles and 18,500 kilometers, 11,000 miles thick, respectively. Saturn, like Jupiter, emits about 2.5 times more radiation than it receives from the Sun. This is due to the so-called Kelvin-Helmholtz mechanism, whereby energy is generated due to the gravitational compression of the planet and due to its enormous mass. However, unlike Jupiter, the total amount of energy radiated cannot be explained only with this process. In addition to this, 
scientists have suggested that the planet creates additional heat due to the friction of helium flows. A unique feature of Saturn is the fact that it is the least dense planet in the solar system. Despite its dense and solid core, Saturn's large gaseous outer layers bring the average density of the planet to only 687 kilograms per meter cubed. As a result, it turns out that Saturn's density is less than that of water, and if it were the size of a matchbox, it would easily float down a stream or river. Since Saturn is a gas giant, it does not have a solid surface in the same sense as the Earth. It would therefore be impossible to land a spacecraft, although it could be dropped slowly with the parachute and transmit information until the intense pressure of Saturn's atmosphere crushed it. This was the fate of the Cassini spacecraft. The chemical composition of Saturn's atmosphere is about 96% hydrogen and 4% helium. In addition, elements such as ammonia, acetylene, ethane, phosphine, and methane are present in small quantities. The thickness of the atmosphere is about 60 kilometers, or 37 miles. Wind speeds in the highest layer of the atmosphere can reach 1,800 kilometers per hour, almost 1,120 miles per hour, making the planet's winds one of the fastest in the solar system. Saturn also has clouds in the form of horizontal bands. Although this is not as visible as on Jupiter, as you get closer to the equator, these bands become much wider than at the poles, and even wider than those near the equator of Jupiter. Before the Voyager mission was launched in the 1970s, scientists knew absolutely nothing about the existence of these bands. Today, even amateurs with a telescope of sufficient power are able to observe them from Earth. The speed of the winds on Saturn can reach 400 to 500 meters per second, or 1,640 feet per second. The winds blow parallel to the equator towards the front. The wind speed varies considerably according to the latitudes. In the areas of interaction of the wind currents, storm systems and vortices form in the same way as the Great Red Spot on Jupiter. Another fascinating phenomenon which can be found in Saturn's atmosphere is the appearance of large white spots. These are the storms that occur on Saturn and are similar in nature to the Great Red Spot on Jupiter, but their life cycle is much shorter. One such storm was observed in 1990 by the Hubble Space Telescope. Historical observations indicate that the occurrence of such storms is periodic and that they occur about once per revolution of Saturn on its orbit. The upper layers of Saturn's atmosphere are as hot as those of the Earth, but unlike our planet for this gas giant, the Sun is far enough away that its direct impact alone cannot explain such high temperatures of the thermosphere. Based on the measurements taken by Cassini, astronomers were able to establish maps of the heat flow in the atmosphere. By analyzing the results, the researchers discovered how polar electric currents heat the upper layers of Saturn's atmosphere and set the wind in motion through its thickness. Because of the movement of the wind, this energy, initially generated near the poles, can propagate towards the equatorial regions. As a result, the equator is heated to temperatures twice as high as those calculated under the direct action of sunlight. Measuring the density of the atmosphere gave scientists the information they needed to determine the temperature regime. The density decreases with height and the rate of its decrease depends on the temperature. Thus, astronomers found that temperatures peak near the aurora, indicating that the upper atmosphere is heated by polar electric currents. Like all gas giants in the solar system, Saturn has a ring system. However, Saturn's ring system is the most famous in the solar system. Unlike those of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, Saturn's rings are lush, large, and bright, making this planet a favorite subject for space artists. 
Galileo was the first to see Saturn's rings in 1610, although from his telescope, the rings looked more like handles or arms. 45 years later, in 1655, the Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens, who had a more powerful telescope, later proposed that Saturn had a thin, flat ring system. As scientists developed better instruments, they continued to learn more and more about their structure and composition. The rings are mostly made up of billions of tiny particles of water ice with traces of rocky material, as well as dust and other cosmic debris. The size of the particles vary from grains of sand to blocks the size of a house. Some of them are even the size of a mountain. It is this composition that helps explain why the rings are visible from Earth through telescopes. Ice has a very high reflectance of sunlight. In addition, the rings are relatively young. Scientists suggest that they appeared very recently, 10 to 100 million years ago. Other researchers suggest that Saturn's rings, although very young on the scale of the universe, will soon disappear. Saturn has seven major rings, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, named by the letters of the Latin alphabet in the order they were discovered. The main rings, the most visible from Earth, are A, B, and C, and are the densest because they contain larger particles. The less bright D, E, and G rings are also called dust rings because of their small particles. The outer F ring is quite dense and narrow, but it also contains many small particles, making it difficult to categorize. In fact, each ring is made up of thousands of smaller rings, literally pressed together. But there are gaps between the main rings. The gap between the A and B ring is the largest of these gaps. It is 4,700 kilometers, or 3,000 miles. The main rings begin at a distance of about 7,000 kilometers, or 4,350 miles above Saturn's equator, and extend for another 73,000 kilometers, or over 45,000 miles. Interestingly, despite the fact that this is a very large radius, the actual thickness of the rings is no more than one kilometer, or no more than 0.6 miles. And if you put all the ring material together, you get a moon with a diameter of about 400 kilometers, or 250 miles. That's nine times smaller than the size of our moon. The ice particles in the rings orbit Saturn at a speed of about 10 kilometers per second. Their speeds are so well balanced that neighboring particles appear stationary relative to each other. In fact, they move very slowly in different directions, at a speed of one to two millimeters per second. To give you an idea, land snails crawl at about the same speed. From time to time, we can observe an impressive spectacle. It is the collision of two large particles. Here are two blocks of ice the size of a house that are slowly starting to touch each other. They were unlucky and could not resist the mutual pressure during the impact and slowly collapsed. A typical catastrophe for rings at the speed of one millimeter per second. Saturn's rings are mainly brown or sandy in color, but other color variations can be observed. Since the rings are mostly water ice or white in color, the color variations may be the result of contamination by a rock or by carbon. It turned out that a large amount of oxygen envelops the rings, which was a discovery for the scientists. The material of the rings being mainly water ice it was expected that the atmosphere would also contain mainly H2O molecules and their decay products, hydroxyl and hydrogen groups. In addition, mysterious rays have been seen in Saturn's rings, which appear to form and disperse in just a few hours. Scientists have speculated that these rays could be composed of electrically charged fibers or dust-sized particles created by small meteors impacting the rings or by electron beams from the planet's lightning. 
There are several hypotheses on the origin of the rings of Saturn. Some astronomers believe that they are fragments of broken comets, asteroids, or even moons. Others believe that the rings were formed from the remains of the protoplanetary cloud from which Saturn was formed. The most common theory to explain the formation of Saturn's ring system is that it resulted from the destruction of a once existing satellite of the planet. For example, when it collided with another satellite or asteroid, or under the influence of the tidal forces of the gas giant, when the orbit of the moon became too close to Saturn. A unique feature of the planet is the persistent atmospheric formation at the north pole of the gas giant, known as the Saturn hexagon. This is a fairly stable formation, having the appearance of a regular hexagon surrounding the north pole of the planet. This atmospheric phenomenon has enormous dimensions, reaching 25,000 kilometers or 15,500 miles. The shape of the hexagon has not changed for over 30 years. There's still no explanation for this unique phenomenon. Scientists suggest that it is part of a large vortex, the main compartment of which is located deep in Saturn's atmosphere. But the walls that govern its movement are not clear to specialists. The analysis of the images sent by Cassini has allowed scientists to obtain new information on the hexagon. Thus, they have found waves propagating from the corners of the hexagon. In addition, astronomers were able to see that the inner parts of the hexagon are darker than the outer parts. Cassini also showed that each of the poles of the planet has a monstrous vortex, whose heat is generated by giant internal storms. Images taken by the Hubble telescope, which photographed Saturn's south polar region for several days, show that the auroras have different characters from one day to another. Compared to the Earth, where auroral intensities change in about 10 minutes and can last several hours, Saturn's auroras always appear bright and can last several days. Observations made by Cassini during its flight to the planet showed that Saturn's auroras are created mainly by the pressure of the solar wind, i.e. the flow of charged particles from the sun, and not by the sun's magnetic field. Thus, the strong auroral glow of January 28, 2004 was created by a recent significant disturbance of the solar wind. The images show that as Saturn's auroras became brighter and therefore stronger, the ring of light surrounding the pole narrows in diameter. Moreover, Saturn's rapid rotation and strong magnetic field allow the aurora to appear on this planet even at noon. The phenomenon is due to the reconnection of the magnetic field lines on the day side of the body's magnetosphere. The magnetic reconnection is a common process in space that causes rapid acceleration of charged particles and produces events such as solar flares on our star as well as auroras. During a solar flare, a cloud of frozen plasma is emitted into space, some of which may reach the Earth. When they meet the magnetosphere at the poles of our planet, charged particles collide with atoms in the atmosphere which leads to the appearance of auroras. Astronomers used data from the Cassini mission and were able to obtain evidence that reconnections occur in Saturn's magnetic disk even at noon. The authors note that the apparent discrepancy is due to the rapid rotation of the planet, which rotates around its axis in about 10 hours. Such a rapid motion can compress the magnetic disk and create conditions for reconnections. According to astronomers' calculations, the intensity of this process should be sufficient to create auroras on the day side. In 2019, American researchers discovered, with the help of the Subaru telescope on Hawaii, 20 new moons in orbit around the planet, bringing thus its total to 82. Saturn has surpassed Jupiter as the planet of the solar system with the most moons. Saturn's moons are numerous and varied, making the planet and its moons look like a miniature solar system. 
According to NASA, Saturn has 82 moons. 53 of them are known, while another 29 are waiting for confirmation of their discovery and official name. The moons of the gas giant vary in size, shape, and composition. Some of them make a complete revolution around Saturn in half a day, while others take about four Earth years to complete one circle. Saturn's moons can be classified into three distinct groups. The first group includes the inner moons, Pan, Daphne, Atlas, Prometheus, Pandora, Epimetheus, and Janus. They are all formed of blocks of ice of a regular shape. The size of one of them does not exceed 200 kilometers or 125 miles. They revolve around Saturn in circular orbits almost in the plane of the planet's equator, and make a complete revolution in only a few hours. All the inner moons are closely related to the rings and interact dynamically with them. The moons Pan, Daphne, and Atlas are part of the A-ring, while the moons Prometheus and Pandora are located at the end of the F-ring. On the other hand, the moons Epimetheus and Janus are in a kind of unique gravitational dance with each other. The orbit of one of them is only 100 kilometers or 60 miles closer to Saturn than the orbit of the other. An interesting fact for this group is that the moon closer to Saturn is moving a little faster and is approaching the more distant one every four years. During this approach, they interact gravitationally with each other and change orbits, so the closer moon moves to a slightly more distant orbit, and conversely, the further moon moves to a slightly closer orbit. Note that this exchange of orbit is repeated every four years. The second group includes the large moons of Saturn, Titan, Enceladus, Mimas, Tethys, Dion, Rhea, and Iapetus. Each of them is an independent world with unique characteristics and a unique history, and Titan, because of its size, mass, and the presence of a dense atmosphere, would deserve to be called a planet. Titan is the most Earth-like celestial body in the solar system, which has its own seasons, rivers, lakes, and even seas, with the only difference that the average temperature at this remote place from the Sun never exceeds negative 180 degrees Celsius, or negative 292 degrees Fahrenheit, and all the above liquid is represented by methane and ethane, substances that exist on Earth only as gases. With a radius of 2,574 kilometers, or 1,600 miles, Titan is Saturn's largest moon, and the second largest in the solar system after Jupiter's moon Ganymede, it is even larger than the planet Mercury. Titan's mass represents 96% of the mass in orbit around the planet, including the rings. Titan orbits Saturn in a regular circular orbit at a distance of 1.22 million kilometers, or 750,000 miles, which is three times farther from its planet than the moon is from Earth. Moreover, it completes one revolution in about 16 days. Titan is an exceptional moon. Despite the extremely low temperatures on the surface of the giant planet's moon, Titan has its own dense atmosphere and even real seas and oceans of liquid methane. Titan's atmosphere is composed primarily of 98.4% nitrogen and 1.6% methane, with traces of a small amount of other gases, including various hydrocarbons, with mixtures of argon and methane photolysis products such as ethane, hydrogen cyanide, acetylene, and molecular hydrogen. The latter slowly escapes from the atmosphere into space. Because of the low gravity, Titan's atmosphere extends to an altitude of 1,500 kilometers, or 930 miles, 
Titan's upper atmosphere shows a complex layered structure of aerosol, haze, or fog. As the fog descends into the atmosphere, it transforms into an enveloping smog of complex organic molecules. Thus, a thick layer of fog about 300 kilometers or 200 miles high, orange in color, absorbs most of the visible sunlight, allowing only about 10% of the light to reach the surface. Therefore, despite the fact that Titan has a thicker atmosphere than Earth, the overall haze creates a weaker greenhouse effect than that seen on Earth. A person standing on the surface of Titan during the day will only register one thousandth of the daylight brightness of the Earth's surface. This comparison takes into account not only the thickness of the atmosphere, but also Titan's greater distance from the Sun. However, the light levels on Titan's surface are 350 times brighter than on a night with a full Earth moon. Since the methane in Titan's atmosphere is constantly depleted, there must be a mechanism on the surface to replenish it. One possibility is that Titan has active volcanoes that constantly emit methane. Titan is indeed very similar to the early Earth. It is covered with strange lakes, hills, mountains, and canyons. In addition, on this moon, there are methane showers with volcanic activity. On its surface, there are sand dunes with a mixture of methane, ethane, and water ice with dark patches of mud. In addition, a large impact crater and several concentric features have been discovered, suggesting that Titan's surface was not formed primarily by impact craters, but by geological activity. With the low temperatures on Titan's surface, negative 179 degrees Celsius or negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, methane and ethane can exist in liquid form and play the same role that water plays on Earth they fall to the surface as rain, flow along rivers, and form seabeds and lakes. In addition, Cassini data has revealed the existence of oceans or lakes of liquid methane on Titan. For example, the largest lake in Titan's southern hemisphere is Lake Ontario, which was discovered in June 2005 near Titan's South Pole, and so named because its shape and length is similar to those of Earth's Lake Ontario although Titan's lake is much larger. Therefore, there is a developed meteorology, complex and diverse landforms with complex geological activity that make Titan one of the most interesting celestial bodies in the solar system. Titan is the only celestial body in our solar system apart from the Earth that has permanent liquid bodies on its surface. However, since surface temperatures at the poles average negative 179 degrees Celsius or negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, the liquid is a mixture of methane, ethane, and propane, not water. Moreover, precipitation, erosion, fluvial activity, and fog are arguments for the strong similarity of Titan and the primitive Earth, despite the huge difference in temperature. With the beginning of research in the Saturn system, it's become quite clear that Enceladus is much more complex and contains many more secrets than previously thought. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn that orbits the planet at a distance of 238,100 kilometers, or 150,000 miles, almost four radii from Saturn and makes one revolution in 1.3 days. Its orbit is located in the densest part of Saturn's E-ring. Most probably, this ring owes its origin to this moon. The shape of Enceladus is an ellipsoid with three axes, with the longest axis facing Saturn and the shortest axis connecting the North and South Poles. The average density of Enceladus is 1.61 grams per centimeter cubed. It has the highest albedo of the solar system, 90%. Therefore, almost all the light of the sun falling on the surface of Enceladus is reflected. 
and that is why it represents the brightest moon of the solar system. Its surface is very young. There are relatively few craters on it, characterized by a bulging bottom, and there are areas where they are absent. The main component of Enceladus is water ice, so that its surface is almost white. The average surface temperature is negative 198 degrees Celsius, or negative 324 degrees Fahrenheit. The most interesting landforms are the faults. These depressions can extend up to 200 kilometers, or 120 miles long, and 5 to 10 kilometers, or 6 miles wide, with a depth of up to 1 kilometer, or 1 mile. Stripes consisting of curvy linear grooves and ridges are also curious. They often separate flat areas from areas with craters. On July 14, 2005, the Cassini station encounters Enceladus for the third time, passing at an altitude of only 172 kilometers, or 100 miles above its surface. During this flight, the station succeeded in detecting for the first time the geysers of Enceladus. The maximum concentrations of emissions were recorded as Cassini passed over tectonic faults determined by a system of parallel, narrow cracks called tiger stripes. Long-held suspicions have been confirmed. Enceladus is not a dead moon of Saturn, but a geologically active moon. This activity may be caused by a strong heating of the core, which must be melted in some places. In the region of its south pole, and from the system of cracks, geysers of fine ice dust spout into space, forming fountains of ice particles rising for hundreds of kilometers. This dust then dissipates across Enceladus's orbit, forming Saturn's most distant and rarefied E-ring. Despite its small size, Enceladus has a tenuous atmosphere, formed mostly of water vapor, 91%, and nitrogen, 4%. There's also some carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen. The gravity of this small moon is not sufficient to retain the atmosphere, so there's a constant source of its replenishment. Thus, powerful cryovolcanoes, or geysers, can serve as such sources. Assuming that the formation of Enceladus, like other icy moons of Saturn, occurred rapidly, we can estimate its internal structure. Most likely, there is a rocky core surrounded by an ice mantle. Therefore, the destruction of the ancient landscape is probably due to the fact that hot flows melted the icy elements of the surface. Scientists assume that cryovolcanism on the icy moon is periodic. Thus, each period lasts only 10 million years, and these active epochs are separated by intervals of calm lasting from 0.1 to 1 or 2 billion years. Thus, it is this periodic activity that explains the great difference in age of the surface of Enceladus in its northern hemisphere, 4.2 billion years, at the equator, from 170 million to 3.7 billion years, and in the south, 5 to 100 million years. Thus, such an event renews 10 to 40 percent of the surface of Enceladus, which is consistent with the size of the current active region in the south, 10% of the total surface. Moreover, scientists have discovered on Enceladus the existence of traces of expansion of the crust, similar to the oceanic expansion of the Earth, but with a surprising difference. The expansion occurs in one direction, like the movement of a conveyor belt. Thus, this system of cracks, also called tiger stripes, is similar to the mid-oceanic ridge of the Earth, where volcanic material rises from the depths and renews the crust. On the other hand, the presence of an ocean under the surface of the ice is confirmed by geysers gushing out of cracks, and also by measurements of the gravitational field. The surface area of the ocean is about 80,000 kilometers squared, or 50,000 miles squared, 
and is about 10% of the total area of the moon. Moreover, the thickness of the water layer is about 10 kilometers or 6 miles. Its depth is 30 to 40 kilometers or up to 25 miles. Ocean temperatures vary from negative 45 degrees Celsius or negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit in the upper layers to positive 1 degree Celsius or 33 degrees Fahrenheit in depth. It is convenient to note that these are comparable parameters to those in terrestrial, Arctic, and Antarctic waters. Mimas is the closest large moon of Saturn. It orbits the planet at a distance of 185,600 kilometers, or 115,000 miles, about three radii from Saturn, and makes a revolution in almost one day. The shape of Mimas is a three-axis ellipsoid, with the strongest axis facing Saturn and the shortest connecting the North and South Poles. Its average density is 1.15 gram per centimeter cubed. Its albedo is 60%. Most probably, it's composed almost entirely of water ice. No sign of internal activity is visible on the surface of Mimas. It is covered with craters. The largest crater has been named Herschel. Its diameter is about 130 kilometers, or 80 miles. Tethys is the third large moon of Saturn. It orbits the planet at a distance of 294,700 kilometers, or 180,000 miles, just under five Saturn radii, and makes one revolution in 1,888 days. Tethys has an ellipsoidal shape. Its average density is 0.984 grams per centimeter cubed. Its albedo is 80%. Apparently, this moon is almost entirely composed of water ice. The surface of Tethys is covered with many craters. However, traces of geological processes are also visible. For example, a huge fault that extends over several hundred kilometers, called Ithaca. Dione is the fourth large moon of Saturn. It orbits the planet at a distance of 377,400 kilometers, or 235,000 miles, a little more than six radii from Saturn, and makes one revolution in 2.7 days. The diameter of Dione is 1,120 kilometers, or 700 miles. Its average density is 1.48 grams per centimeter cubed, and its albedo is 60%. The very high density indicates that this moon contains a significant proportion of rocks. Its surface is older than the surface of Enceladus, but much younger than the surface of Tethys or Rhea. The ice crust of the moon is cut by numerous faults and canyons, indicating that Dione is relatively active geologically. With a diameter of 1,528 kilometers or 950 miles, Rhea is the second largest moon after Titan of Saturn. It orbits the planet at a distance of 527,100 kilometers, or 330,000 miles, a little less than nine radii from Saturn, and makes one revolution in 4.5 days. Its average density is 1.24 grams per centimeter cubed. Its albedo is 60%. Although Rhea is larger than Dione, its surface is much older. In fact, it is dotted throughout by craters. Iapetus is the seventh large moon of Saturn. It orbits the planet at a distance of 3,560,800 kilometers, or 2.2 million miles, 59 radii from Saturn, and makes one revolution in 79 days. Unlike the closest moons, which orbit almost in the plane of Saturn's equator, Iapetus's orbit is tilted 7.5 degrees from that plane. The diameter of Iapetus is 1,436 kilometers, or 890 miles, which is slightly smaller than Rhea. Its average density is 1.09 grams per centimeter cubed. One of the surprising characteristics of Iapetus 
is that one of its hemispheres reflects six times less light than the other. The equatorial zone is covered with a dark reddish substance of composition. As you move toward the poles, this layer of matter thins and disappears at the poles. It is called the yin and yang of Saturn's moons. The origin of the phenomenon would be outside of Iapetus. It is thought that the original dark material comes from debris torn from small moons by meteorite impacts and then aggregated on the hemisphere of Iapetus. The main source would be the moon Phoebe, which would leave behind it, like a wake, a trail of material that Iapetus would collect thanks to its orbit similar to Phoebe. Another intriguing detail on the surface of Iapetus is the presence of a mountain range of 10 kilometers or 6 miles that runs parallel to the equator on nearly half the diameter of the satellite. The third group of Saturn's moons are small bodies captured by Saturn throughout its existence. These are Phoebe, Kiviuk, Ejurok, Paliak, Scathi, Albiorix, Uriapis, Siarnak, Tarvos, Mundafari, Narvi, Satungar, Thrymer, Emir, and 20 other moons that have been discovered in the last two decades and are not yet named. These moons orbit along the very periphery of the Saturn system, moving in irregular orbits with large eccentricities and inclinations to the plane of the planet's equator. The most distance of these moons makes a revolution around Saturn in 3.4 years. In addition, many of them have retrograde orbits, which means that they rotate in the opposite direction of the rotation of their planet. Studying the orbits of these moons can reveal their origins, as well as information about the conditions surrounding Saturn at the time of its formation. Among these moons, only Phoebe reaches a size of 240 kilometers, or 150 miles. The size of the rest is only a few kilometers. However, it is the only one of Saturn's irregular moons to have been studied by a space probe. Phoebe orbits Saturn at a distance of 12,900,000 kilometers, or 8 million miles, 215 radii of Saturn, on a retrograde orbit. It makes a complete turn in 548.2 days. Its average density is 1.64 grams per centimeters cubed. Its albedo is only 8%. Finally, it should be said that several undiscovered moons with a diameter of several kilometers probably revolve around Saturn. The planet Saturn does not meet the conditions necessary for the existence of life forms that we know. However, some of the gas giant satellites, notably Titan and Enceladus, may have conditions suitable for life. Titan's surface is one of the most Earth-like places in the entire solar system. For several decades, scientists have seriously argued about the possibility of the existence of at least the simplest life on Saturn's moon. Despite such an unusual form of existence, Titan seas could become a kind of cradle of life for the ubiquitous extremophile organisms of Earth. Using the vast array of biological ingredients for which Titan is famous, local life could gradually evolve to at least the simplest level. In addition, various organic substances created in the atmosphere and deposited on the surface as rain are one of the reasons Titan is of the greatest interest to astrobiologists. Titan's atmosphere is thought to be similar to that of the early Earth. According to scientists, the condition on Titan today are almost the same as on Earth 2.8 billion years ago. That is, some semblance of the Mesoarchaean era now prevails there, but at the same time, life already existed on Earth. If this is true, then the first cyanobacteria could exist on Titan right now. For the record, these bacteria were actively engaged in converting atmospheric carbon dioxide into oxygen gas on Earth 2.8 billion years ago, and it is this activity 
that's responsible for establishing the current ratio of nitrogen to oxygen on Earth, which was a key step for the existence of life as we know it today. Previous studies using molecular dynamics modeling as a method of studying the chemistry of life have suggested that bubble structures based on nitrogen compounds may well appear on a world like Titan. Whether microbial life exists on Titan is perhaps the most intriguing question for scientists. For one thing, a very important component for life is missing from the surface of the satellite, liquid water. In this context, scientists believe that liquid methane can take over the functions of liquid water on Titan. It is quite suitable for some exotic life forms. After all, we know that organisms on Earth can live in absolutely incredible conditions, extreme temperatures, high radiation, and no water. Can creatures like this survive Titan's hostile environment? This life could take the form of microbes and extremophiles in the inner ocean, or could take the even more extreme form of methanogenic life forms. As has been suggested, life could exist in Titan's liquid methane lakes, just as organisms on Earth live in water. Such organisms would inhale dihydrogen H2 instead of oxygen gas O2, metabolize it with acetylene instead of glucose, then exhale methane instead of carbon dioxide. Despite the fact that the emergence of organic life is recognized as difficult on Saturn's largest moon, researchers hope to find traces of exotic forms of living matter on Titan. Thus, the Dragonfly mission, scheduled for the 2030s, is the most anticipated mission to identify this possibility and which may be able to detect the existence of life in the simplest pattern. In the solar system, there are many places where microbial life is possible, but Enceladus is particularly attractive in this regard. Enceladus is one of the most interesting moons of Saturn to study because of the presence of factors favorable to the existence of biological life, including the presence of a liquid water ocean under its icy surface, a rocky silicate core, and hydrothermal activity. An analysis of the composition of the subglacial fluid has shown that the local oceanic water emitted by the cracks and faults of Enceladus is rich in organic substances, so necessary for the formation and maintenance of biological life. The analysis of Enceladus's CO2 has shown that this moon can be the seat of complex chemical reactions taking place in the ocean floor. A study of the gas plume and frozen spray ejected through cracks in the moon's icy surface suggests that the interior of Enceladus is much more complex than previously thought. For example, analysis of Cassini mass spectrometry data has shown that the abundance of CO2 is best explained by geochemical reactions between the moon's rocky core and the liquid water in its subsurface ocean. Combining this information with previous discoveries of silica and molecular hydrogen indicates a more complex and geochemically diverse core. The presence of dissolved carbon dioxide also indicates the presence of geothermal events within Enceladus. At the bottom of the ocean, hydrothermal vents release energy and mineral-rich fluids that allow unique ecosystems to thrive. It is around these same hydrothermal vents that life would have appeared on Earth several billion years ago. Thus, on February 28, 2015, during the flight of the automatic station Cassini over Enceladus, tiny silica particles markers of ongoing hydrothermal processes were seen. Therefore, various sources of CO2 and silica particles observed imply that the core of Enceladus consists of a carbonized top layer and a serpentinized inner layer. On Earth, carbonates typically occur as sedimentary rocks, such as limestone, while serpentine materials form from magnesium and iron-rich seafloor igneous rocks. Researchers believe that such a unique core structure could allow for the emergence of subsurface ocean life forms still unknown to scientists. 
In addition, Enceladus may have high concentrations of ammonia, which could be a potential fuel for life. And while high concentrations of this gas may indicate a lack of living organisms, it does not mean that Enceladus is devoid of life. Perhaps there just aren't enough microbes to consume all the chemical energy available. Enceladus's water vapor, organic components, thermal eruptions, and possible subglacial ocean make this moon intriguing to astrobiologists looking for possible origins of extraterrestrial life. Maybe there really is life on Enceladus. A variety of microorganisms may well be present. In February 2018, an international team of scientists from Austria and Germany reported that they were able to replicate conditions on Saturn's moon Enceladus to see if they were suitable for the existence of Archaeon, which are hypothetical ancestral cells that are thought to have characteristics more or less comparable to those of a present-day Archaebacterium. It turned out that these organisms can survive on the satellite as well as produce methane found in the gas geysers of a celestial body, leaving doubt and mystery hovering around this distant icy moon. Finding extraterrestrial life is an old dream of humanity, and of course, it is logical to look for it only where at least something living can survive, wherever there are at least the most favorable conditions for life. It is almost impossible to imagine human life on Saturn. However, when considering the gas giants as potential colonization objects, much attention is paid to their moons, Titan and Enceladus. In this context, Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is a most promising celestial body in terms of the search for life. In the distant future, according to scientists, it may become a serious candidate for human colonization. However, to date, the colonization of Titan has only a scientific and purely fictional interest. But experts suggest that in the future, such a flight could be justified due to the depletion of hydrocarbon reserves on our planet, which are present on Titan in huge quantities. As mentioned above, the main obstacle to the colonization of a satellite, even in the distant future, is its distance from the Earth. Current technologies, which are for the moment very limited, could be used to colonize the Moon and Mars, but are not sufficient to carry out the plan to colonize Titan. The potential colonization program of Titan includes mainly the creation of an industrial base that would be responsible for receiving and sending goods to Earth hydrocarbons, as well as helium, could become the primary raw material produced on Titan's surface. In order to provide sufficient energy for a colony on Titan, thermonuclear energy will have to be actively developed, thanks to the reserves of uranium and plutonium on the surface of this moon. As for the possible buildings and structures of the first colony, they could be made with ice, whose strength at low temperatures on the surface of Titan is equal to the strength of steel. Ice blocks and multi-layer frost can be used for construction. However, for the normal operation of the first colonies, it's also necessary to develop metallurgy. In this context, Titan has large reserves of metal ores. In addition, on the basis of hydrocarbon raw materials, it will be possible to develop the production of ultra-light composite materials on the moon. Thus, the creation of an important industrial base on Titan will contribute to an increase in atmospheric temperature. This, in turn, will lead to various changes in the processes that currently take place on the surface of this moon. The planet Saturn and its mysterious moons will probably surprise us more than once.